Right guys, so in this video, we're going to start designing out our dictionary attack. Now, just something I forgot to mention in the other video, I forgot to actually show this image of multi-threading. So again, as I mentioned, the Tekinta GUI is going to be running on this main thread. Now, without threading, everything's gonna be running this thread. So if you have a large execution that takes a lot of time, it's going to freeze the GUI screen because the GUI is only gonna work again once that operation is over or that execution is over. So that's why we're gonna create a new thread, which is our dictionary attack class. So then if we just go back um, to it, so when the controller runs attack.start, what's gonna happen is our main thread is then gonna branch up, well, create a new branch, which has the thread run in here. And then as you can see, threads may switch and exchange data results. So because they're using like the same memory space, our thread can update the view um, as well concurrently at the same time. And then once this execution is done, the main loop is still going to continue running. Okay, so um, if I go back, okay. So what we're going to do first, we're just going to create our, because there's a lot of methods I wanted to write out. So let's do them. So def run, and this is all going to be explained later. So def underscore attack underscore folder, self target underscore folder. We're just going to write pass on all of these. Okay, and then the next one is def underscore attack underscore file self target underscore file and then pass. Okay, and then the next one is def underscore attempt underscore open underscore file and then self and it's going to take in the target pass and this is going to be the one of the most important parts is crack file it's crack underscore file uh, self and then the target file more after this, which is f underscore store underscore password, self password, sorry, password and target underscore path. Okay, pass on that. Okay, so now first things first, this is, this is ultimately the design of our dictionary attack. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna scroll up to the top to run. Now remember what I mentioned about run, this is gonna be the main entry point for this thread, this thread's execution. The same way that the application is the main entry point for our whole project. So this code you see here, everything that we do in this GUI is running from this main part here. Okay, so that's what run is gonna be. And run is gonna be initialized by this start up here, the attack.start. So first things first, what we're gonna do is self.view. So the instance of the view that we have, which is the main um, the main page, we're going to run clear text underscore out. So what this is gonna do, if we say that if you've run it, you've run the program once and then there's still text in that text box, this will just clear it. So clear the, well, clear the previous output, if any. And just so these videos don't go on too long, I'll try and break it up a bit rather than doing one long continuous video. And then self.view.insert underscore text underscore message. So we're going to insert a text message and it's going to, the message into the text box and it's going to be called initializing. So if it's going to be an F string and actually it doesn't need to be an F string. We're just going to cause it initializing. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And in the middle, we're going to say initializing. Okay. And then update underscore idle is going to equal to true. So we're going to update the text output with this message. Okay. And then our targets. Um, here, I'll just effectively going to be equal to self dot 
tech underscore targets dot get underscore targets. So this is going to return the list of the targets. So self dot attack targets dot to get targets. So that's the method. And then what we're going to do, so for target in targets, now remember each target here is a file or folder objects. So remember, this is a list of file or folder objects. Okay, so we're going to iterate over that. And what we're going to do is if is instance, instance target file, then self dot attack file target. And then otherwise, so if it's a folder, then self dot underscore attack folder target. Okay, so then we just need to import file. So it's recognized. So effectively, what this is saying is, it's iterating over the um, attack targets, and it's saying if they're a file, then we're going to run this um, method. Otherwise, we're going to run this one, attack folder. And I'm going to show you um, the use of code reuse and why it's so powerful in the in the second one when I get to that. So next, we're going to do self dot view dot set um, underscore current underscore target. So um, what this is, so once everything's done, this is basically ending the dictionary attack. So this is like the closing part of the dictionary attack. Okay. And then self.view.insert text message is going to say um, program end. So let's do that. One, two, three, two, three. And here is going to say program end. Then at the end of that, we're just going to return none. That's our, that's the code that's going to basically be executed from our program. So now um, we've done all this. What we're then going to do is our attack file and our attack folder, the code for these. Okay, so uh, is there anything else I need to explain? That should be fine. Remember, set current target, so that's showing the user the current target. But once the um, attack has ended, there is no current target. So that's just resetting that. And it's going to show the user that the program has ended. OK, so now what we're going to do now is the attack folder. OK, so now this is going to say self.view.insert text message. So there's going to be a lot of using this code. And it's going to be a string, this one, and it's going to say, one, two, three, one, two, three, targeting the folder, and then target underscore folder. So remember, because we did that repar, um, this on the folder, that's just going to return the folder path, this target folder, directly specifying it like this. Okay. So that's what that is for. And then self.view.set current target. And that is basically equal to target folder. So the string of the target folder. And that's the path. So that's going to say we're currently at, um, targeting this path. And then for file in target underscore folder dot folder underscore files self dot underscore attack underscore file file okay and as you can see that's the code reuse we've done and then self dot view dot insert text message we're going to say um here one two three one two three and we're going to say exiting the folder, then same thing again, target folder, target underscore folder. And let's make that F string so that it shows. Cool. OK, so now here's the power of the code reuse, because effectively, remember, and this is why there's the power of object-oriented programming, 
because what is a folder? It's a collection of files. So what we're doing here is we're going through all of those files and we're just reusing the same code that we have here for targeting a single file. So yeah, effectively it's just running this multiple times to attack everything in that folder. Okay, so now I'm gonna do this, the code for this, and then I'm just gonna end the video, then we're gonna do more in the next video. So self.view.insert text message. And this is gonna say, this is gonna be an F string, and it's gonna be saying one, two, one, two, targeting the file and then target file, target underscore file. Okay. Then um, self.view.set underscore current target is going to be equal to target underscore file. And then um, we're going to see if the type is supported. So is underscore supported underscore type um, is equal to that is going to be equal to, so the target file, so target underscore file, um, target underscore file dot file underscore type in self dot supported types. So basically, if the file type is in the supported types that we have here, so if it's in this frozen set, so if it's a dot raw or dot zip, then that means it's supported. Otherwise, it's going to um, be false. So that's what that variable is. So this is basically a Boolean variable. Okay, and then we're going to run our code. So if is underscore supported type, so if it is a supported type, then what we're going to say is we have a, a variable called password required equals self dot underscore attempt open file and then target file. So if a password is required, if it is um, supported, so if it's a dot raw or a dot zip file, we're going to attempt to open the file. If the file opens with no issues, then that means that it's not encrypted. And if it doesn't open, then that means we need to try and crack it. So this is how we figure that out. So we're going to do that. And then if password, so if the password is required, then um, self dot view dot insert text message f string and then we're going to say target underscore file is password protected okay and then what we're going to do we're going to attempt to crack it so self dot underscore crack did i say file for it? so sorry this should be crack file so crack file So then we're going to attempt to attack uh, um, crack that target file, target underscore file. Okay. And then up, what we're going to do next is else. So if it isn't password protected, then self dot view dot insert text message. And uh, F is going to be ignore target underscore file is not password protected. So basically what I'm saying is, um, it's going to say ignore. So we're going to ignore this file because it is not password protected. So there's no reason to crack it. Okay. Now, what if it is not supported type? It's not a supported type. So else self.view.insertText message um, F, we're still going to ignore it because target underscore file. So basically ignore target file. Apologies. Ignore this target file. New line. Target file, target underscore file dot file type is not supported, is not supported dot and then new line. Okay. So that's perfect so far. And let me just see something. Oops, this is all good. Okay. 
So this is where I'm going to stop the video for now. Let's just remove the pass. And if there's any others, we can move them. Cool. And next, we're going to do the other half of this code when we're actually cracking the file, which will be the longest. So yeah, stay tuned to the next video, guys. Bye.